Hey everybody, welcome to my lesson on responsive full screen circles using VMAX units and edge to edge text animations. It's a bit of an awkward title, but take a look at what we'll be building. Today we're going to take this simple layout on the left and turn it into this animated version on the right. All right, what's happening here is that we're taking the circle and making it fill the browser window as the text goes all the way across the screen and then more content comes up. What's great about this solution is that it's fully responsive so that if you resize the browser window, everything still works perfectly. That circle is going to fill the entire browser window and the text is gonna go all the way across before more content comes in, all right? It's gonna work at a wide size and it's also going to work at a narrow size. In this previous lesson called Prevent and Scroll During Full Screen Intro, we built out this demo here where we had a circle moving across the screen and then it filled to fill the entire browser window and then we were allowed to scroll through an animation. In this demo, we used a technique where we determined the distance from the center of the screen to one of the corners to generate the radius of our circle. Today I'm going to show you how we get a very similar result with a very simple CSS VMAX value. So I'm going to use this animate document to illustrate the magic of 142 VMAX units. Let's just say that this white square here, which is our document, is going to be our viewport, okay? Right now it has a width and height of 300 pixels, being a perfect square. And I want to use VMAX unit to take this circle and make it so big that it covers the entire white area of our viewport. Now it's important to note that 100 VMAX units equals 100% of the largest side. That means that one VMAX unit is 1% of the largest side. Follow me? And so that means one VMAX unit in pixels is going to be the number of pixels divided by 100. With our current document size, one VMAX unit in pixels is going to be 300 divided by 100, which is going to give us three pixels. So the big takeaway is one VMAX unit is three pixels. So what I'm going to do is select my circle here and I'm going to say, all right, its size is going to be based on one VMAX unit, which is three pixels times my magic number of 142. And when I apply that to the width and height, I get 426. And now you'll see that the circle perfectly fills in the entire what was white area of my viewport. And now let's take my document and make the width 400 pixels wide, okay? And we'll leave it at the 300 pixels tall. Well, as you can see, this circle here no longer is going to cover that rectangle. So let's use the same calculation one more time. And so now our largest size is 400 pixels, which means that one VMAX unit is going to be four pixels. So I'll take the size of my circle. I'm gonna take four pixels as one VMAX, and I'm going to multiply it by 142 and hit return. And now you'll see that the entire stage is still covered by this circle. And I want you to note that it's also a little bit bigger than it needs to be. But that's because we don't know how much shorter the shorter size is. We're just making sure we can cover a viewport up to 400 by 400. So if we go back to my document settings, and I set the height to be 400, we can go all the way up to 400 by 400. And again, this circle when centered is going to perfectly cover it, all right? So the most important takeaway here is that at 142 VMAX units wide, the circle is guaranteed to cover the entire viewport regardless of its aspect ratio. Let me show you this in CSS. Let's do a quick cruise of our starter file. In the HTML, we have a full screen hero section with a dot and this heading one of financial planning. Down below, we have a class called main and that just has some dummy text in there. So as I scroll down, you'll notice that these things are sort of shrinking and fading out. And then we see our main content come in down below, okay? So I have this animation in here just so that I can have some boilerplate JavaScript ready to go, all right? We've been going through scroll trigger stuff so much, you don't need to see me type this stuff out. But I do wanna show you that we're creating a timeline that has a scroll trigger. The trigger is going to be the hero section and it's gonna start when the top of the hero is at the top of the browser window 
and scrubbing set to true, pinning is set to true, and we have our markers on. The only animation in there right now is that we're telling the big hero section that it's gonna fade out and shrink down a little bit. So really, this is all here just to show you that I have some basic scroll trigger mechanics in place, okay? Uh, but we're gonna be changing around that animation quite a bit. So first things first, we wanna go up to our friend the dot here, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use that 142 VMAX trick to fill the entire browser window. So let's jump over to our CSS, and I wanna show you that we have our dot here with position absolute. We're setting a pixel width right now just for a basic setup, and we're doing left and top 50% with a negative 50% translation to get things perfectly centered, all right? Instead of using something like Flexbox here, I'm using this position absolute because I want to layer things on top of each other, and it's really pretty standard and easy to do it this way, okay? And I'm using the same approach with the text. Position absolute, left top 50-50, and same thing with the X and Y translation. So let's go over to our dot here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this 150 here to, we'll say, 100 VMAX units. And I'm going to do the same thing for the height. So let's just make it the browser window really sort of narrow right now and do a run. And you'll notice that the circle is as tall as the browser window, okay? That's because the vertical length here is largest and that's what it's going to use for the width and height. Now if I stretch the browser window even more, it's not gonna change the height at all, all right? But we're gonna get to a point, I guess, where it's going to be wider than it is tall and now the circle is as wide as the width of the browser window because it is the widest measurement, okay? But at 100 VMAX units, you'll see it's again 100% we talked about over in Animate there. But we need this circle to be bigger to fill in all this space up here. So 100 VMAX units doesn't quite do it, but we know the secret and that's 142, all right? So I'm gonna set the width and height to 142. We'll do a run, and now you should see that the browser windows, yes, completely dark blue, all right? The circle is so big that there's no light blue to be found. We can shrink all the way down and not see any blue in the corners, and we can go all the way up and not see any of that light blue in the corners, all right? So the 142 definitely works. You might say, Carla, what about 138, you know, or something close? Well, I'll let you try that on your own. You've got to trust me here. So now that I know that at this size, it's going to cover the entire browser window, what I want to do is scale it up to this size. So here, when I have my transform, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start it at a smaller scale, all right? And just so we can still see it, I'm gonna set it to a scale of 0.3, okay? And now when I run, you're going to see that it's going to be, you know, pretty small and in the center. That's basically 30% of its full size at 142 VMAX. Now, one important thing I wanna show you here with these transforms is that the order of operations matters. If I take the scale and I scale it First, we're going to get into some trouble because what's gonna happen, it's going to be scaled and then translated and it puts it over here in the bottom right corner, all right? So just a little tip there for when you're doing this, the order of operations is very important. So let's jump into our JavaScript now and the next time I run it will be centered and we're going to look at our tween here and I'm gonna tell our friend the dot, not the hero, to go up to a full scale of one, okay? So we're gonna go from its initial scale to a scale of one. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't want any nasty anti-aliasing around the edges, okay? So I'm gonna start it really big naturally, scale it down to zero, and then when I scale up to its normal size, there won't be any weird edges. So let's just give this a run. And now we're starting at 0.3. And as I scroll down, we go all the way up to fill the browser window, and then the rest of the content comes up, okay? So I just wanted you to see it at this sort of smaller size here, but in real life, what we wanna do is set that initial scale to zero, all right? Once I set it to scale zero, it's gonna disappear. You're gonna have no idea where it is. So I just want you to know for sure it's at a scale of zero all the way in the center here, 
And as I scrub, it's gonna fill the browser window and the rest of the content comes on up. How cool is that? Next, let's animate the text. So for our heading one here, we want it to start completely off screen to the right and move completely off screen to the left. So right now it's perfectly centered, and in the beginning there, I sort of just told you how these settings work. I just wanna make it really clear that if I take away this transform here, this is where the text would normally be, okay? With its left edge at 50% of its parent container and its top edge at 50% of the parent container. Doing this transform here moves it back over 50% of its width and up 50% of its height to sort of do an offset that makes it perfectly centered now, okay? So I just wanna make sure everybody understands that. Well, this isn't where I want to begin or end. I want the text all the way off screen to the right. So what I'm going to do is again, get rid of that transform on the X and Y, okay? So we're a little bit off screen here. And I'm gonna change the left position to be 100%. And what that's gonna do is push it so far away that I can't see it. But the thing is, I still want to move it up 50% of its height because I need it centered vertically. So I'm gonna change this transform to a translate Y and only do a negative 50, all right? So I don't have any translations at all on the X value, all right? So just remember, we're sitting vertically centered off screen to the right here. So what we need to do is take it from this position and animate it across the screen. So let's go into our JavaScript, and what we're gonna do here is add another tween, and I'm basically going to do a two tween on my heading one, and we're going to say that the X position is going to animate minus 100 viewport width units to the left, okay? And we're gonna do this at the exact same time at a position of zero as the dot is animating. So let's do a little scroll here and you'll see our text is off screen. And now it's gonna go all the way basically to the left edge, okay? Pretty darn close there. Well, once it gets there, I need to move it an additional 100% of its width over to the left. So I'm going to double up here and add an X percent value of negative 100. And so that's gonna move it based on its own width. So now as I scroll down, watch, it's going to go completely off screen and then everything else comes up, all right? So we're gonna have the circle filling, we go all the way across and then the text is going to come up, all right? So this is a very cool technique here of mixing an X translation using viewport width units to get 100% of the viewport width and then we're also offsetting it by its own width, the width of the text, 100% there, okay? Very cool what you can do when you combine these things. Now, one final touch here is that maybe I don't wanna see the bottom of the circle here. Right now, it doesn't look too bad. Um, one thing I could do is an overflow hidden on the hero itself. So let's go back to the CSS and let me just find where we have our full screen element, okay? There I can do an overflow hidden. And now what we should see is that we get it cut off there, all right? The bottom of the circle goes away. So we scroll up and then we have sort of this different colored section down below. Um, but I sort of like the illusion of the circle filling the screen and then everything is gonna be dark below here, okay? You can do what you want, but I'm just gonna show you how I would approach this. Um, we know the dot is what color here. Let's go grab this nice dark blue color. I'm gonna copy it. And in my JavaScript, as soon as the dot scales up to one and my text moves across the stage, what I'm gonna do is a very quick set on the body and I'm gonna say that the background color is going to be that hex value that I just copied. So now when I scroll down, we get to the dark blue and everything is dark blue that comes up beneath, okay? So it's pretty cool. We got these two super responsive animations going on and by responsive, I mean that we can stretch the browser window out super wide after it's animated, go back up to the top, still have the circle go down to nothing, and we can still have that right to left of the text moving across the screen, 
and then the new text comes in, all right? So we can go wide, we can go narrow, and everything just adapts. We don't have to do any sort of listening for resize event, updating values. It all happens perfectly when scroll trigger refreshes with our responsive values. Before I go, let's demystify the 142 VMAX value just a bit more. Blake Bowen of Greensock had shown me this demo that has this big circle, all right? And right in the center of it, there's this rectangle drawn, okay? And the outer black edge of this circle is one that has a width of VMAX 283. And what this demo shows is that as the width grows of the rectangle, as long as the width of the circle is a VMAX 283, it's always going to be inside that black circle. So let's bring the width down and bring the height up and you'll see as the height gets bigger, again, it's always inside that black outer edge there. And I'm gonna change things around just a little bit so that the width is exactly 470 we'll go to and we'll make the height exactly the same size. So here we have a square and it's completely inside the black circle here when the center of the circle is at the top left-hand corner of that square. So in our example from earlier, our circle was always drawn in the center of the square. So what we could do there, knowing that, we can take that 283 value and chop it in half, and 283 divided by two is gonna give us 142 and change. So I had just rounded down, and the 142 VMAX worked perfectly, again, when the circle is drawn from the center. So remember your friend 283 VMAX here, and let's just jump back into Animate, where we have our stage of 400 by 400, and we determined that one VMAX unit would be four pixels. So if I take this circle in the top left-hand corner and take its width and say, let's make you four times 283, boom, what do we get? We get a circle that when its center is in the top left corner, it will perfectly fill up that entire square. And again, if our circle is in the center, let's take my little align tool here, put it in the center perfectly, and now, look, its width is 1132, but let's take our four pixels and multiply by 142, and boom, there you go. A circle in the center with the width of 142 VMAX is going to fill in that 400 by 400 square. And for a little bit more background on this, there's this forum thread here where Blake goes into more of an explanation of the math and logic behind it all. I strongly recommend that regardless of your skill level, you read the Greensock forums regularly, okay? I'm constantly favoriting threads like this so that I can go back to them for a refresher. And even if you're just starting out, I'd suggest trying to help people. There's always somebody that knows a little bit less than you, and as you try to help them, you'll do a little research and most likely learn something new along the way. So thanks, Blake, for the help on this one, and I'll see you folks in the forums. Please have fun making loads of full screen circles. Do you want to gain mastery of the Greensock animation platform through more videos like this? I'll show you all the tips and tricks I've learned over a decade of using GSAP, working at Greensock, and teaching it to thousands of developers like you. My training is guaranteed to save you hours of frustration as you learn to add ultra slick animations to all your web projects. Visit creativecodingclub.com today to unlock the world's most comprehensive Greensock training. And let me help you discover the joy of animating with code.